Decently priced VR experiences coming soon? Cross-platform play between consoles and PCs? Dogs and cats living together? Is it mass hysteria or has gaming finally been saved? I'm a little bit dizzy, but uh, let's get right into it because, ugh, believe it or not, this is actually going to be a somewhat positive episode of the very ethical, totally uninformed gaming show. Mm -hmm. Mostly because Shibby's not here to give a review for Hitman and fuck everything up. Yeah. But we'll save you the time and tell you that he'd probably give it the standard 0 out of 10. But Shibby! We do have actual news out of the gaming world for you this week because PlayStation just debuted the release schedule and pricing of its VR hardware. Don't do that, you're gonna throw up. Yeah, I'm getting sick. The PlayStation VR will come in at an entirely reasonable price point of $400 and will be released in October of this year. Which means if you just drop $2 in a jar every day from now until release, you can own one of these things and probably have some money left over. There were a lot of stories being circulated about how Sony was dishonest about this price point. Get out of here. You need the PlayStation camera in order to use it. Well, that's stupid. It's only an extra 50 bucks you've had since its release to get one, and you have from now until the release of the VR, which is about six months, to get one of these things. So stop complaining. Shut up. Yeah. You're living in a great time. Ask someone uh, for a birthday present or something. Yeah, we all don't have rich friends with <laughs> oh, yeah. gaming VR friends. Anyway, here's the specs. It's gonna have a 5.7 inch OLED screen with 1920 by 1080 resolution with a 100 degree field of view, 360 degree tracking, and a latency of only 18 milliseconds. Boom! Sony reps are claiming that there are currently over 200 developers creating experiences for the device, and they expect 50 games to be released by the end of 2016. But that's not all, tell them what else they're getting. <laughs> Sony is also claiming that the VR headset will be compatible with all, all, all PlayStation 4 games. How the hell is that possible? Well, okay, that whole thing is a bit misleading, sure. Technically, they will be compatible because the headset will allow you to play them in cinematic mode. Meaning that when you wear the headset, it will appear as though you're playing these games on a gigantic screen, kind of like a movie theater. Which is... Still, still awesome. Still fucking cool. I'm just gonna lay down in my bed, play games without exerting my body at all. Fall asleep, enter a dream world where you don't know the difference between reality and virtual reality. Yeah, it's the dream. Yeah. Needless to say, we're very excited for this news because we both own Sony consoles already, so this lowers the barrier for entry into VR to something we can actually wrap our heads and our wallets around instead of buying a device that's around $800 and then building a high-end gaming rig to support it. Too expensive. Now, of course, the PlayStation VR isn't going to be able to match the high-end quality of something like the Vive or the Oculus, but it's a great move by Sony to help bring VR into the mainstream. Yeah, now starting next Tuesday, the 22nd, you can pre-order the PS VR, but sadly, or happily, depending on how you look at it, it's only available in bundle form, and that's gonna run you an extra $100 but with this bundle, you do get the camera and two move controllers along with a game called VR World. So definitely a good start for someone jumping into that. World. It's a fine deal. Yeah. I mean, the camera's 40 bucks, the move controllers are 30 or 40 bucks. I don't know how much the games, it, you're, they're not ripping you off. Yeah. Anyway, really quick, since we're specifically on the topic of Sony, uh, it leaked earlier today that Sony might actually be developing another console. Yeah. What? Something referred to as PS 4.5. Okay, Kotaku yeah. dropped the exclusive today saying that developer sources told them that the PS4.5 quote will include an upgraded GPU both to support high-end 4K resolution for games and add more processing power that can enhance the games supported by PlayStation VR, a headset that Sony will launch this fall. Now, Sony obviously didn't confirm or deny any of this, but it is interesting, especially in a world where the classic console cycle of over five years turns into something way less realistic for what consumers demand out of their systems. I want the best, and I want it now. This is great news. This is uh, this is fantastic if news. They, if, if, if the shops do like a trade-in offer, sure. They should just attach it like old school ways. You just like plug it into the back of the... The, the N64 had a bunch of ports on the back <laughs> yeah. that never got used because no. they were designed to be like, well, we might add something onto it later. Never did, no. but... Nah. But in other what the fuck is this real life news? Microsoft has just flung open the door to cross-platform play. What? AKA being able to play games with or against your friends regardless of what console they're on or even being able to play with PC gamers. Mr. Microsoft, tear down this wall. PC gamers being Trump supporters. 
Now we'll get into why this uh, could be a terrible idea in a second, but here's what Microsoft had to say about this whole thing because there are some stipulations. They said, Xbox One and Windows 10 using Xbox Live will be able to play with players on different online multiplayer networks, including other console and PC networks. Of course, it's up to game developers to support this feature, and Xbox Live players will always have the option of choosing to play only with other Xbox Live players. I Get like these these PS4 players out of my lobby. Uh, I, I, I do think it's cute that like the Wii is sitting down somewhere going, oh geez, what about me? I'm uh, here guys, hey, I got one or two of the games you guys got. <laughs> and they're like gimped versions of it too. I mean, yeah, well, you gotta use the, you know, you got, it's, it's, it's asymmetrical playing. It's, it's a whole new thing in games. That's the, that's the typical Wii user. And then you have Super Smash Brothers fans who are just bros. You're all bros, bros, you're like us. Bros. Anyway, they went on to confirm that the first title that would be included in this new plan would be something that makes a lot of sense. They said, we're thrilled to confirm that Psyonix is Rocket League Woo! will be one of the first games to take advantage of this new capability by enabling cross-network play between Xbox One and PC players with an open invitation for other networks to participate as well. That's awesome, that's yeah. great news. Love that Rocket League. Yeah, so basically Xbox is down if everyone else is. But as far as we can remember, Rocket League is already cross-platform on PS4 with PC players, just the same way that Xbox will be doing it. So this might be the start of something huge, and, and Sony's reportedly on board with the idea, stating that they would, quote, be happy to have the conversation with any publishers or developers who are interested in cross-platform play. Tear down this wall. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> that's what that people are gonna be saying in 20 years about the Trump wall. Yeah. Now, our only worry here is that when FPS games get the okay to go forward with cross-platform play, it will upset the balance of competition in those games. We reported before on this show that tests were being conducted between PC players and console players. And the results show that there's absolutely no way people playing with a controller can even come close to having a fair chance at going up against any player who's using mouse and keyboard. It's just FPS, it's, that's how it is. That's not a slight against console players or PC players. It's just a statement that the balance is skewed more in favor of keyboard and mouse. And yes, we are well aware of the different types of third-party hardware that you can buy for consoles to make it possible for you to use mouse and keyboard on your console, but that's a bad example for what they're trying to implement because people who do that are in a very small minority of users. So, there Anyways, go. there's actual news out yeah. of two of our favorite games. The first news is that the first DLC from Fallout 4 titled Automatron will let you choose from hundreds of mods, mixing limbs, armor, abilities, and weapons like the all-new lightning chain gun. Ooh! Yeah. You can even customize their paint schemes and choose their voices. It's coming out next week. Yeah. It's gonna be available March 22nd. It's gonna cost you 10 clams. A drop in the bucket. All the money you've been saving for VR over the past five days, throw it at the deal. How can I say no? Like, the, the, that's how they get me. $10? Sure. Sure. Hitman for like $12? Sure. sure. Whatever. Uh, and then the next news is about Heroes of the Storm, my favorite MOBA, which is finally getting an ARAM mode, or all random, all middle style something. They're calling it Lost Cavern, that's the map they're using on it. The ARAM mode has been hugely popular in League of Legends since its introduction, and offers a different and unique experience to these types of games. So it's something, uh, something fun. Yeah. It'll shake things up. Yeah. Anyways, uh, sorry we weren't mean in this episode yeah. at all, except for... FPS players on console. And PC players. Yeah. But it might have been one of the most positive weeks for the gaming industry ever. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't that much to be pissed off about. Yeah. We're as sad as you are. Yeah. But that's the case. We promise to be meaner next week. Mm. Um, uh, since Shibby isn't here, uh, we could at least find an Amazon review for uh, one of the Hitman games of, of yesteryear. So yeah. here we go. Let's take it back to 2012 for a little game called Hitman Absolution and a review from Jonas Romulus and Edgar, who titled their review <laughs> more like Shitman. He or they said, My controller for my Xbox 360 is broken, so I am unable to play this game. <laughs> Tried it in the Wii also, and it wouldn't even read the disc. <laughs> Gonna have to return it. And I am not happy about this. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure Jonas and Edgar, or whatever his name is, I I'm not <laughs> sure he understands how video games work. <laughs> Either that, or he was actually attempting to be an early pioneer for true cross-platform functionality. I put the same disc in a it's different a console. It's a game, it's a game console. It wouldn't even read. So that's a very scathing review of Hitman Absolution. I enjoyed it. <laughs> a lot of people did. It was, it was a fun game. It was hard to find a one-star <laughs> review, but that guy, he really showed everyone else. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we have some other content over here that's actually good. You can watch a Weekly Weird News episode about furries who are solving the Syrian refugee crisis. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can watch Tech Tuesday where artificial intelligence is going to kill us all. And of course, a brand new podcast over there. So check that out. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time when we're hopefully angrier about Yeah. That.
Yeah. Yeah.